a reminder for myself and before we start the talk somebody had emailed that uh, question that from my understanding am I to understand that we can't get anywhere without the shaykh and astaghfirullah no that's completely incorrect understanding. You can do many things on your own and everyone is capable and we're talking about the rule and not the exception. In dealing with Allah can do anything Allah wants to do, no one can limit that. But the rule is if you want to be a doctor you study medicine and you study medicine from a doctor not from a mechanic. And if you want to learn about being a mechanic you study from mechanic. It's not something you pick up in a book being a doctor, so it requires studying. So we understand that in dunya and it seems to be very well understood in dunya. Nobody has conflict in their mind and shaitan doesn't play with them. Shaitan actually encourages them, oh you know go after your dunya and be a big doctor and go to this university and without a doubt they quickly enroll, find the best professors, which university puts out the best medical degree so that one day you can capitalize on that degree and people will come to you, that's a given. So it must be understood and make common sense. That do you think the way to Allah is easier or harder? And the tricks of the nafs and the self and is that something that can be done alone by a person? Wa kunu ma sadiqeen When Allah that's why when we teach if you write what we teach and then you go back later and the article comes out and you take the article, print it and study it, it gives the entire reference to the Qur'an, quotes the Qur'an, quotes the hadith so that you understand and you understand how the Qur'an is teaching us that we're not making just khatir and thoughts and putting thoughts together but Allah inspiring to the heart of Prophet and Prophet inspiring to His guides and they inspire to their students that the Qur'an, Holy Qur'an is a guidance for mankind, Hudan al-Mutaqeen. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And when Allah min shaitanir rajeem, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, ittaqullah wa alimakum Allah, ittaqullah wa kunum ma'a sadiqeen. That everything has to do with a taqwa and consciousness and Allah throughout Qur'an is, is asking a company truthful service. Not that they say they're truthful but truthful through their deeds and their actions. We said before the, the proof is in the pudding that your faith in action, their deeds and actions are truthful, their maqam al ihsan should speak for itself. They don't have to show their degree to anyone and they don't have to validate themselves but the proof is what's coming out from their knowledges and from actions. As a result that becomes a university and that becomes then a shaykh I want to accompany because of the knowledges and the actions that I see. Those knowledges I want them so I will enroll with him. Those actions I also want to 
activate within my life. I want the love of Prophet I want to follow them. I want to look like the love of Prophet I want the knowledges of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and I follow them. And that becomes the university of the heavens. Now can you do that by yourself? That's exception. There are people whom Allah are murad, Allah calls them, guides them, dresses them however Allah wants to. And the common is murid in which Allah wants the student to reach these realities. It's not kindergarten so it won't be in every masjid. It's very advanced realities so they require advanced teachers. Not the teacher of a book because you have external teaching and internal teaching. Somebody asked in another email, what does the Zahiri mean? Exactly what it says, external teachers. Means they read the sharia, they read the hadith and they teach that. They are the translators of Arabic to English or Urdu or any other language. They don't teach about its reality. And somebody posted a hadith of Imam Ali that in the time of his being the Khalifa, he went around to all the masjids to hear who was teaching what. And he, after he went from every masjid hearing what they teach, what they teach, he shut them all down except for two. And he said, those they, they don't know what even they're saying, they're basically re repeating back what they read. But these two, they know the reality of what they're saying, it's best that you sit with them. Means the external scholar is one whom well read but doesn't necessarily know the reality and the depth of what's being said but he can tell you all of its verses and footnotes and who said to who said to who said to who said. But doesn't mean he has any knowledge of what was being said and the reality and the substance of what was being said. So those are external scholars and those whom their hearts are attracted to that. They move towards that, they don't want inner realities, they want to memorize this nad and the chain of authorities and, and that's appealing to them and their heart is drawn to that. But again someone who wants to reach to realities, it's common sense, how are they going to reach their own, on their own? So then they enlist into a school and a shaykh and say, I want the shaykh from what he's teaching. So you go to find the doctor whom you feel is the most credible doctor with the realities that you want and as a result you accompany him and you learn from him his realities. And from the realities he teaches, he teaches a way in which to achieve it because that's how he achieved it. But it, can it be something done on our own? No. These are called uplifting's that these realities, this accompanying a guide, loving them, opening your heart to that reality, supporting them, uh, living a life of khidmat, everything that's been described, documenting the knowledges, documenting the realities, it's a uplifting because your soul will lock on to their soul through the good manners and good character. And as a result of that locking their soul is uplifting the student because the soul is in a continuous mirage. And Allah describes them because these are all from the realities of the heart, these come from Surat Al Yaseen. Fuluq al mashkoon wa hamalna dhuriyatuhum fi fuluq al mashkoon that their souls are like loaded ships, loaded mashroon like a energies Mawlana would describe. And hamalna they carry within their loaded energies 
the souls of those whom come into their company. Because the soul is not a, a stagnant creature, it doesn't just sit there. It's an energy of vibration that is in a continuous flux of movement and energy. The only thing that just sits there is that which came from dunya, your physicality, right? Your physicality is of a dunya material matter but your spirituality and your soul is in a continuous movement and wave. Its beginning and its end is not understood. Where your light is coming, how much of it's connected and to where is it connected. And those whom operate from the realm of light and which Allah open their light and they have a governance over their light, they use and operate their being with their light, they're like ships. Anyone who comes into their vicinity immediately comes on board. Those whom lock on with their heart, with their deeds and with their actions because this is how Allah wants His servant. So he's teaching the student, you have to also be sadiqeen. As you're requiring the shaykh to be because you're looking for sadiqeen, right? You're looking for shaykh whose knowledges of realities and the actions of realities, all the deeds and everything that they're doing is by their deeds and their actions or matching the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. Then they train you, come on their ship and you act the same. That's why they tell you, contribute. Don't, don't just think you're going to take it and take the realities and one day r run away but be a truthful servant. What you took you owe, of the realities you owe and of all of these stations Allah is granting Prophet wants for us a khidmat. Go now and serve humanity that show your loyalty, put everything of your faith within action. It's not something that I keep hidden, my faith is something that I continuously put into action. So means then the students of the shaykh they're continuously showing their faith, showing their love, showing their respect and showing their khidmat and service. Why? Because they're truthful in their deeds and in their actions. They're not hidden silent people where you don't even know what they believe because their deeds are not known to anyone. These deeds have to be known, the love has to be shown and the actions and the khidmat has to be visible to the help and to the benefit of people. And as a result that becomes the tariqah in which I want to accompany them. The realities they have, they're not regular teachings and as a result of accompanying them, loving them, being of service in the ways that they've taught, my soul is locked on with them and wherever they go they take me with them. Because the ship doesn't throw its passengers off every time it goes into a beatific location, means as the ship is moving through these tajallis Everyone on board is being dressed by those tajalis and that becomes the beatific dress and the fayas that people talk about and emanations that Sufis are known for means that as they're being dressed everyone on their ship will be dressed by its realities. So we want a ship that talks and teaches about immense ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad because those are the tajallis we want. If you're interested in a ship that talks about fire and then you find that type of ship and when it goes through that fire you can feel the burning of Jahannam and if that's pleasurable for you then best of luck. Means that which you are attracted to then you look to board that ship. And as a result to be dressed and to be blessed by it. Alhamdulillah for the month of Hajj and the immense realities. At the beginning phase the student reads Surat al-Yusuf because now we come to the twelfth month. 
which is our pilgrimage and completion of this journey but not an end because every journey is a circle. At one point, one point it stops and then it continues on an infinite rotation and that becomes the opening of Muharram. But the beginning journey it's understood by Suratul Yusuf in which Allah gives to awliyaullah and to everyone that this is a beatific surah. Now this because these knowledges come to the heart of awliyaullah they're describing for us that it's beauty and the reality why Allah is, is saying that this is a beatific story, this is a beautiful story. <coughs> because the people of if I know that the dress of the twelfth month is the pilgrimage and what Allah wants for His servant is that every year you're pilgrim and every year you're in a continuous movement towards Divine the Presence otherwise you have no purpose on this earth. If your purpose on earth was to eat, drink and use the facilities it's a wasted creation. And what Allah wanted for this creation was to reach towards beatific realities. So the entry level, beginning level and those whom are coming new then read Surat al-Yusuf and describes how Allah says, this is a beatific story we're about to tell you. Why? Because Allah wants the beatific dress of Sayyidina Yusuf upon the servant. And the only way to achieve this beatific dress are through the turuqs and tariqahs. Why? Because they are the paths of the Muhammadan light. They're not kindergarten, they're not regular classes. These are for the khawas and the souls in which Allah has destined for them to reach to realities. That's why we said in the beginning, <coughs> if they don't have that interest they're not interested at all because Allah didn't put that interest within them, it's not their cleverness. It's when Allah loves that servant and wants them to achieve these beatific realities Allah has to put that desire within. We say even, حَيَّلَ السَّلَاحَ حَيَّلَ السَّلَاحَ حَيَّلَ الْفَلَاحَ حَيَّلَ فَلَاحَ حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ Means even for prayer you have no power and might or help to even get up and pray if Allah doesn't want you to pray. You can hear the azan all day long and people don't even move, they don't even feel like they have to move. Hawla and quwwa has to reach to the servant, that the help and power has to come from Allah that, I want you to pray to me. And their samina wa tana and the soul's command overrides the sickness of the nafs and commands the being to go and to pray. So it means everything we do is by the grace of Allah Almighty. <coughs> to reach the beatific dress of Sayyidina Yusuf then we read Surat Al Yusuf and understand what makes the servant to be so beatific in Allah's eyes in which the understanding of the women that were chasing Sayyidina Yusuf means dunya in which the dress of the servant becomes so beatific upon them that all of dunya will cut itself to give to that reality. And that's what Allah wants for the servant is to take a beatific dress, take these dress of realities and lights and as a result your path upon dunya was a means in which to achieve beatific lights for your akhirah destination. Your path on dunya was not your path on dunya where you thought, oh it's just going to be my whatever I want to do for dunya is dunya and akhirah is separate, church and state are separate. Allah no, He wants for us that use your dunya to achieve your lofty stations in paradise. And Surah Yusuf represents that reality. 
that given a dream is a prophet with 11 brothers whom are very high stations. We believe them to be the prophets of Bani Israel and the 12 tribes of Bani Israel. And it relates to his father who's a prophet that I see the 11 planets, the sun and the moon bowing down for me and telling that, don't tell your brothers that what you've seen of your dream. Means that the seeker every step of this ayat al kareem and Qur'an, this holy surah is a description for the path. That this path that you're going to partake on it's not going to be similar to anyone in your family. No matter what the darajat of your father or your brother or anyone in your family. Many come and say, my, my father is such and such. Well, my family are all chistiya and all this and all that. And Allah give into the surah first when you come through the door, they don't care what you think your station is. Your station may be uniquely different than your father's. And that became the reality for Sayyidina Yusuf The whole path of dealing with jealousy from the brotherhood, not from outside people. The brotherhood and its jealousy that when they saw the beatific light upon Sayyidina Yusuf they became jealous of that. And the danger of jealousy we described in nights before, before we left for the beginning of the month, that jealousy is the, is the greatest danger on the way of tariqah because it blocks every miracle. When someone has a jealousy within their heart immediately the miracles begin to be blocked and they see nothing of the path, they see nothing of its signs. And Allah gives the beginning of the surah as a whole understanding for servants means that read it very slow and meditate on each verse that Allah is giving. He's starting with a description of a very high station. Can there be a servant in which the sun and the moon and all 11 planets are bowing to him? One means that are there servants that have an immense authority in Allah's presence? In which Allah is describing, this is a beautiful surah, drawing our attention and then starting it with the dream of Sayyidina Yusuf That the sun and the moon under my command and eleven planets making sujood and bowing to me. One establishing this path and this beatific reality is very high its potential is very high and as a result of its immense realities it's based on manners. How can you reach any of these on your own? It's not, can you achieve it as an inheritance from your father? No, Sayyidina Yuqub, Sayyidina Yaqub was not able to give his secret to Sayyidina Yusuf because Sayyidina Yusuf had a completely different reality to achieve. So this lofty station and the first danger of this path is jealousy. That what you're about to embark on even your brothers if they hear it they're going to try to harm you. So then everyone sitting at home wondering, should I tell my cousin, should I tell my this, should I tell my story? No. Don't tell your dreams, don't tell your path, don't tell what you think you've achieved and what abilities you're, you're beginning to have within your heart because Allah is giving a warning that those whom are closest to you if they become jealous they can begin to try to harm you. This is a prophet of Allah And what the brothers did? They threw him in a well. We're going to go fast through the surah because we, for many years we're going over this at this reality. But we'll go fastly through it so to encapsulate its understanding.
So Sayyidina Yusuf is thrown into a well. One, you're now going to be thrown into a well when you enter into tariqah. So first thing they say, hey Gal, oh, 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 all my friends they left me, all the people I knew they don't want to talk to me. Uh, even relatives and, and, and close associates have all gone and this is your well. Everyone on this path has a well. The life they knew before and they think, oh I don't know why I'm on this path and as soon as I go on this path I, I lost all these things, I, I lost the connection to everything. Many people have immense sacrifices and they, they question all the time in their mind, was, was, was it correct to choose that? And Allah is showing, if Allah chooses you, He isolates you and that's your sign. Isolation means you're in your own chal, your own well. <clears throat> it's the very isolation that, that opens the door to the path of the way. Because the greatest danger are people. You know the people around you, they don't just say, oh you're embarking on a spiritual path, great how can I help you? They'll take you down in a second and say, are you crazy? Why would you want to do these things? Well what's going on? Come with us to where we're going, come we usually always go here, we go there. So Allah is giving to us, all those whom are coming new and understanding, Allah is giving to us, no He has to isolate the servant. And the isolation is forced upon the servant this time, later Sayyidina Yusuf will ask for isolation. This isolation Allah takes and throws the servant in a condition in which to isolate them. And as a result of being isolated is distressed and a trading caravan begins to approach. And as a result this caravan looked into the well and said, oh look there's a servant in here, maybe we take him and it will be a blessing for us or some money for us and they brought him out and enslaved him. <coughs> Meaning what? Your free will will be taken away. If you're trying to use your will in tariqah then how are you really going to be asir? Right? To achieve these beatific lights. Allah isolates you, then He says that you're not going to be so isolated because guides are coming. They're going to come and pull you out but they're going to teach you because it's voluntary that to lose your will, lose your, your concept in your mind of always trying to think what your path is going to be, try to be asir in which you're captive, you've been captivated by Allah's Divinely love. Think of it in a nice way that, Ya Rabbi all my life I've been choosing and they all seem to be wrong. So I surrender myself to your will and this is what taslim and Islam mean, is surrendering our will to the will of Allah to reach these immense realities and immense lights. As a result of that they understood <coughs> when this caravan comes in our life, the very caravan and the tariqah that we enter, the shaykh that we draw near to, it's like a rope that been tied to us. Allah has destined, this shaykh will take you now out of that darkness and into the light, into the path of light. And as a result the caravan is taking Sayyidina Yusuf to Malik al-Aziz, to a kingdom, to a king, a noble king. Why? Because this is a path towards the heaven, the kingdom of Allah Aziz 
And why Malik al-Aziz? Because the sifat of Aziz means that nothing can be taken from it. When Allah decrees upon a servant whatever He decrees to come upon that servant under sifat al-Aziz nobody can stop it. And whatever Allah wants to withhold from the servant nobody can stop it or bring to it. Means that name alone is very important in that reality and that that king means that they're bringing this caravan and this servant to the heavenly kingdom because everything is a is an analogy to reach to these realities because every surah is alive right now. We don't read it like a story for the past, it's right now what is Allah want from us? That we're going to be isolated in life and every choice you made that you feel that you're isolated because of those choices that was the right choice. It's only through isolation that you can reach to the reality. And when the caravan came and it took you and it traded you without your will and your whole path now is based on surrendering your will, surrendering your will. I know, no, I know not what you want from me my Lord but I submit to you entirely of myself and admit that you don't know what Allah wants and as a result of not knowing what Allah wants you become taslim and submit, submit Ya Rabbi I'm submitting. Only you know what you want from me and I know not. I know that when I want something it's most likely incorrect but what you want from me is the best and their whole struggle in life becomes that submission and the submission of their will to the will of Allah and to enter into the kingdom of Sayyidina Malik al-Aziz, the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad That is our life goal is to enter into that kingdom and to enter into the kingdom without will. That's why Allah gives us the analogy that you come in captive, right? He didn't come walking into the kingdom and meet the king and say, hello. Because Allah says, there's an adab for this beautific dress. If you're coming in with your own will and think that you'll sort of lay your path and you'll design the path that you want and one day you'll present yourself to Prophet Allah says, no that majesty and height, that reality is so high nobody enters in, in that reality. And they enter in asir, captive that they have no will and perchance the king will look at them and take them into his servanthood. And this is the highest level of khidmat and service. This was the way that Sayyidina Salaman al Farsi entered, that he sold himself into captivity and slavery and he entered into Medina to Munawwara as a slave and somebody owning him. As a result this is a symbol of how to approach the reality of Prophet that how can we be a slave in this day and age? <coughs> it's not possible but the, the system of taslim and surrendering ourselves, continuously taking down our nafs and bad character and bad desires and asking Prophet that, accept me as your qulam, accept me as your servant to be of service to your kingdom and to your nation. And this is the highest reality and the highest achievement is to live a life in service to Sayyidina Muhammad And the word slavery for us and to be a slave is an immense honour for the kingdom because abd is not the same word in English as it is in Arabic. Abd is one whom Allah when He grants the servant this reality of abd they're granted an ancient knowledge. Means these servants are custodians of Allah's ancient alim, ilm that they inherit from that ayn and they inherit from the immense realities of knowledges and realities. Means servanthood in Allah's way is the highest honour and that's why Prophet described that nothing made me more happy than when Allah called me Abdullah. 
means the, the servant abd that reached the highest uloom and knowledges of Allah We pray that Allah grant us an understanding of the immensity of this holy month and the beatific lights to dress us. That with that qurban taking difficulties and badness away then the beatific lights upon the soul that Allah complete His ni'mat and His blessings upon our souls for the sake of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.